But I talked to Steve and I um, was able to piece together what he did and, and hopefully have, have exactly what, what we need to do. Um, but so Steve can't make it, so okay. I'll be. So are you, do you have, so you're starting to discuss that second agenda item? Yeah, so we have committee reports and we can, you know, see where we, see where it leads. But we, you know, I'm prepared to, to move forward with um, hopefully some solutions to what we're going to discuss so um, but um, Hillary Hillary Harvey I think everyone knows Hillary do you know everyone <laughs> Hillary Barbara Scott yeah Barbara Scott oh who Barbara Scott oh hi Alderman Doug Blue Patrick Patrick O'Reilly I think you know Jim Noble and we've met before several times welcome um, okay so just go ahead, take, take it, take it from um, I, I'll just start off uh, sort of encapsulating what our meeting with the mayor was on Monday. Um, we. Well, uh, could you back up just one? Sure. Oh. Witnesses regarding. Where do you live and so on? Oh, yeah, okay. start sure. at the beginning. For the record. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, for my record. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Barbara Scott. I live at 66 Spruce Street in the Rondo. Um, and the neighbors of the Rondo have been watching with dismay the ICC construction site mm -hmm. and some of the uh, public safety issues that it's creating. So we have been writing to the mayor, we talked to him, and he agreed to meet with us on Monday, last, this past Monday. So I just wanted to sort of bring you up to where, what happened, and what the issues are for us, and just to be sure you understand that this is a neighborhood issue, not just uh, an immediate neighbor issue. So um, several of us met with the mayor, and we're representing the community at large, and we were talking about the public safety issues created by inadequate fencing. Um, there are gaps in the fencing which children could easily walk through and are, create what is an attractive nuisance. And um, the mayor absolutely agreed that this was a public safety and welfare issue uh, because behind the fencing is a, a pit, an excavation pit for the foundation, which is um, from property line to property line. Um, in addition to the public safety issue, there are erosion and stormwater runoff issues uh, on Company Hill Path, it causing the it's causing the stone wall to collapse uh, and further creating more erosion opportunities. And uh, with every rainfall, there are large gullies and pits that appear in the Company Hill Path is also a, a public safety issue, um, which the mayor again agreed with. And our, our meeting with him focused on another issue which has been no, very little result in terms of response to the complaints. So it was only in the meeting that we learned how much had been being done in response to the complaints. So. With that, he agreed that and instituted a policy that the public safety director, the, uh, Steve Knox, the new director, would uh, communicate as these complaints came in and what, and what their response was, so that we, in fact, knew that progress or response had been made. Because up to this point, we had no idea that anyone was responding at all. Um, so the communication was a, a big piece of the discussion we had with the mayor. And um, 
Then uh, the other very big issue is that the excavation pit, being as large as it is, has um, endangered the property next door. It's gone and actually a lot, um, has created damage on her patio and um, also allows for imperiling the driveway. And it also creates a problem in establishing the fencing, it, like secure fencing, because there's no room to attach the fencing. Um, so the mayor went through the things that he had um, had implemented, and, and they were letters sent out, certified letters sent out to the, the contractor talking about um, and giving them deadlines as to what they needed to do. And also, just to segue into the Steve Shabbat um, discovery, uh, that he, in responding to our complaints, came up with the uh, understanding that there is actually no permitting needed for excavation in the building process. And, um, and that allows, you know, leaves the city open to professional and uh, unprofessional dangerous construction sites. So we're just here to encourage you all to um, help create laws that actually will, you know, prevent these situations so it's not a matter of them cleaning it up after. So, I mean, I just want to add that, um, you know, I, I don't know if everybody knows, she was talking about 32 of Beale Street, the Irish Cultural Center project. They excavated 80% of their property from property line to property line, um, leaving a little bit of unexcavated area right at the Beale Street side of the property. They excavated from about, you know, a few feet in all the way down. There's 15, there's a 15 foot drop from my property um, to the bottom of their property now, and on the other side, 42 of Beale Street, it was um, excavated which, which, right. Which is your, which is your So mine is 26 but in Beale Street. Um, yeah, so the it's, uh, it's closer to Broadway. <coughs> um, it's a big blue house. Okay, um, so if you look at it to the left. If you so if you're front standing front in front of, front of, front of the ICC, the ICC side. property okay. on a Beale Street, mine is on the left, and okay. 42 is on the right. Mine is on bedrock. So uh, we haven't seen the kind of erosion problems that uh, 42 has. They're on dirt. And so the driveway is just crumbling into the pit. And the stone patio is crumbling into the pit. And simultaneously, all of the water from the free rain washes down onto a company home path, which is behind it, in fact, behind or in front of it um, on that side. Um, and where where's like a 12 inch gully into the company hill path goes over the side the path is falling over the side and then it washes out onto west strand street and then the now we're not sure if it's dpw or if it's the icc um, who comes in and fixes the gully and then it rains again and rewashes it all away and then whoever does it comes back so that's one of our questions um who is paying to fix the gully, and if it's DPW, is that bill going to the ICC? And we asked the mayor that, um, Steve Knox, the new uh, director of building safety, was also at that meeting on Monday, and um, he wasn't sure. Um, I don't think it's a building safety department that's fixing the company hill path. Um, so I think that's something that the Common Council, you know, respectfully requests that you maybe find out or be curious about who's paying for that. Because um, if it's the taxpayer, I think the taxpayer should know that. Um, since it is obviously damaged from the Irish Cultural Center. So, and if you haven't taken a walk to the site and, and to see it, um, you, I would highly recommend that you do that because it's really something you can't describe. It's, it's best to be seen. I have pictures, we sent tons of pictures to the building safety, to Steve Shabbat, to the planning department, to the mayor. Um, and I don't know if any of that has made it your way, but we have lots of documentation. Um, so, Lynn, could I add something? Yeah, that's just Lynn. She's been I'm from the neighbors. Last night I was out walking my dogs and it was raining. You know, we had one of our big, wonderful rains again. What happens is all the water goes into the pit and it rushes out of the pit in this one spot so forcefully, it's almost like a little waterfall and cuts into, cuts across Company Hill, it's like really dangerous, and goes off the edge. 
it goes this deep and it's about this wide and it goes all the way down the path. The stones are falling off the path onto the road. I did see this morning that uh, the city was there and patched it up again after every rain. It is the city. It was the city? It's the city. Okay. And they also cut back all the weeds, so I don't know if they're doing that to look at, you know, how severe is the structure of the Company Hill Path in that area at this point. It's happened every single rain, and it's severe. Yeah, and I mean, it gets to the point where it's like, you know, people measured it. Uh, Neville uh, Bean measured it at a foot wide, and then like my husband saw it once it was two feet two down. Feet. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, people are checking on it, and it's, it's a serious problem. And, and, you know, we looked at the state standards, because if the city doesn't have um, code to regulate or permit or, or deal with excavation on private property. And that's really what you guys, I think, are talking about because there are regulations around excavation in public property on the sidewalks and the streets. There's a lot of regulations and you have to get a permit from DPW. And there is a permit from DPW on ICC's site, but it doesn't apply, apparently, to private property excavation which doesn't have, so if it doesn't have any regulations, it doesn't have any oversight. And the building department apparently has, according to the mayor, has been out there more than on any other project. Um, we didn't know this because we weren't in the communication loop, but they've been watching it. Um, and, you know, so there's no regulation about can you excavate up to the property line? If you excavate up to the property line, would you you know, what kind of erosion measures would you have? If you look at OSHA's guidelines, you would have to step it so that the walls wouldn't collapse in on the people doing that excavation work and kill somebody. Um, you would have to, um, you could also just kind of grade it or slope it. Um, there are various ways to shore up the sides. Um, when, you're, when you're dealing with bedrock, it's less of a concern, but when you're dealing with what's happening on 42 of Beale Street side, you're talking about erosion, like soil, just water just pouring down the side and eroding away. Um, so it's a, it's a serious public safety hazard, and it, we really feel like it needs to be fixed um, before the winter, because it's gonna get worse, and any workers that go in there to build a foundation or whatever are gonna be in danger. So, um, so the way that we see it, I know that what you're going to be looking at tonight doesn't pertain to the ICC. So it's not an emergency, because the ICC excavation is done. What you're looking at, to my understanding, is future excavation sites. What happened at the ICC cannot be undone. So that's a separate situation. So, it, so moving forward to look at, let's make sure this doesn't happen again, because the city now has a serious liability on its hands. It approved a project, it made a negative declaration on a seeker, and then it had no say in how that excavation was done. It was done badly, and it's causing serious problems for, co for Company Hill Path, which is city owned, and for private property, which could result in a lawsuit. I mean, who knows? Um, and the city has, has to take responsibility for that in the way that it can prevent it from happening in the future. And so, so our suggestion is, you know, look at comprehensive plan zoning, look at the HLPC, HAC streamlining. The city traditionally tries to put out fires, right? Like, oh no, there's a problem, let's put out fires, and we're gonna do it in a, in a kind of segmented process. But you have the opportunity now, something happened, it's not like, it's a serious problem, and you could look at it comprehensively. I mean, the mayor was talking about on Monday how we have to basically write code now to regulate. We have no code at all. If you look at the codes online and you type in excavation or excavation permit, there's nothing. There's nothing. And the stuff that regulates fencing for excavations is from 1954. And the mayor said, you know, maybe we don't, maybe we want to like look at it more comprehensively than like patchworking it with uh, fencing language from 1954. So, you know, this is an opportunity to write code that addresses uh, something that doesn't exist in, in the code um, already. And so, yeah. And just to insert, the mayor um, made it very clear that the city's uh, hands are tied, that there is no legal backup 
to be able to solve this situation. So that's another reason why we're here today, is just to reinforce the fact that there's not enough code to actually have any enforcement capability. So, um, so if you're gonna write code, we would like to see that um, it, it addresses excavation permitting for private property with oversight from city agencies, so like regulations, and you know, I have some model laws that I can that I can bring to you. Um, I found that, um, well, actually, Tina Baum found um, a model law from Schenectady that's really nice and clear. Um, I found one from Rochester, which is a little bit thicker. <laughs> so we offer that. Um, and, the, and suggest, you know, you guys, like, dig around, look for some yourself. Um, we feel like it should address fencing and safety and particularly erosion. And you might want to look at um, OSHA regulations on that, and I can send you the link for that. You might want to look at the state codes, because when the city doesn't have their own code, it technically reverts to state code, um, and you know, so I don't know, you know, how that would work specifically in situations like the ICC. But um, but moving forward, you could look at what's out there. Basically, is what I'm saying. Um, and then it, we would like to see it include a process for communication with neighbors and particularly adjacent property owners, or if it's it's it gets along a public path like Company Hill Path the neighborhood like so that if somebody has a complaint lynn has made so many complaints and she sometimes got so i mean you've been you've been better they've been better at yeah. responding to you they've been great at, at, do, at taking care of it but nobody gets back to right it. <laughs> so like just like i really feel like a lot of the frustration and the reason why there have been so many complaints about this is because we didn't know what was happening and it was like a revelation on monday to hear that building safety's been out there every day, planning has been out there, there have been inspections, they've been talking to the ICC. Um, the, the mayor confirmed on Monday that the engineer's office sent out a certified letter to the ICC um, with a various, a group, like a whole list of, of um, I don't know what it says, I haven't seen it yet, um, but maybe you could get your hands on it faster, I have to foil it, but you know, um, it, a whole list of ideas for what they need to do to, to shore up the, the excavation site and make it safe. Um, so, so communication, like some sort of process for communication I with I think we have one in zoning, don't we? When somebody's changing the zoning code or something, don't they notify the, the right. right? Yeah. 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 So we, we had a discussion with the. Uh, a letter or a certified letter and then we can saw it has to go up on the for zoning we, we send letters out to the adjoining property owners and we put a sign on that property that's requesting a variance okay. right but i mean it i'm talking about like that though, you know, yeah i mean i'm trigger. talking about like if if lynn sends an email to the building department or like i you know i called tom tian or i actually went to the building department and filled out a formal complaint um and didn't hear back um, although you did respond to my FOIL request, thank you. Um, but like, just like a phone call back, like some, some something that says, okay, we got a formal complaint. Let's write a, a quick report, quick email, quick phone call. Check it off the list. This is part of the process. The neighbor put in a complaint and got an answer. This is what we're doing. This is you don't even have to say what you found, but this is what we we, we got your complaint. And that, and so I'm just saying, if you're writing code, include that as part of the process. Is, is there anything that goes into code that protects adjoining properties, like, like setbacks or things like that? Yeah. Like to, to let somebody dig all the way up to a property line. So I, I've never heard of that. I mean, I've lived Well, in those model cities, laws, it says like you shouldn't excavate um, more than five feet, and if you do, it should never be straight. It should never be straight down. You can come and people die you know, from that. Yeah, I mean, I have a six year old and a nine year old who can't go near the fence on my that they put up on my property because there's a 15 foot drop. Mm -hmm. If they go near that fence, I can't bear and I'm not going to go up to it and test it. I'm just everybody stay away from the fence because if my kids go over, I mean, 
15 feet is, that's a lot. So, um, and then, so we would like it to be based on models. We'd like it to be based on state law and OSHA regulations. Um, we'd like um, it to be in, in consult with the, the building department. I don't know if this would be a DPW or a building department um, kind of framework, like who would oversee this, um, but, or maybe a combination of both. And we, we would really like to see a citizen task force or some opportunity for the neighbors, specifically the impacted neighbors on this ICC project, to help you look at it because now we've been through it, we've seen what happens, and we could we might be able to help just give you another. The mayor mentioned that he would establish a task force to look at the code. No, no, no. Yeah, is that a mayor's thing? Well, the mayor, I think the city can, uh, the council can also. But usually, the mayor has control of the department. Who, who is employees on? to help you know with the. Yeah, so, I mean, so I'm just petition that, or how did no, you? No, I just think you request. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's all positive. Right. 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 Well, I, yeah. I mean, hopefully, it would help avoid problems oh, yeah. for everyone. So. Everybody wants to be safe. Yeah. Everybody yeah. moves in all of a sudden. Yeah, like, oh, and nobody likes have to, to have to hear complaining yeah. neighbors. And, <laughs> you know. So our our actual request. Are, are three. We would like to see a moratorium on any excavation in private property until you get a zoning code in place to regulate it so that this doesn't happen to any other Well, the, the only property. problem I have with that is, I mean, excavation is as simple as a foundation for a house, you know, just a regular addition. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all excavation. And mm -hmm. if you stop all that, then all those projects that people want to do, they wouldn't be able to do. So yeah, I don't you know. Had a swimming pool, you couldn't do that. I mean, take you build the addition in your home, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Well, we could, we, could, we could address some of the concerns fairly quickly. I mean, it so could, I so mean, it yeah. Would, it would have to no, but she's talking about doing this uh, code study and you know, a little more in depth. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it will take more time. Well, it could. What about something like a moratorium on excavation that's more than fifty percent of the property, or something? Yeah, you know, something, something like that. Like, that and a yeah, reasonable, like a something that yeah. that yeah, kind of addresses a like a higher level of project. project. Sure. You know, that I don't know. Sense. No, but that makes sense. Just some way to protect the city while you're putting this in place, and also protect the neighbors. If for I don't even know if this is coming down the pipe if there are any <coughs> other big excavation projects. It also encourages. You know us all to work quickly you know keep it moving let's not like throw it back and forth in and out of committee try to speed it along and then have the citizens all come back and be like no we'll throw it back to committee and you know let's just do it right do it quickly get like a lot of people i'm sure there's other municipalities that do it already i mean those two model laws schenectady is yeah. schenectady might be a great one because it's pretty simple i don't know how it relates to um private property in particular, so the Rochester one might be a better model for that, but I'm sh I did a really quick Google search, so I mean, I think if anybody put, if everybody just kind of, what's a city that's comparable, and just, you know, type in excavation permit, you might just have some great, there's some great language out there. Um, the other request is that you put a moratorium on the ICC bills until they fix the erosion problems. Um, and you know, until they like adhere to the engineer's stipulations um, for correcting those problems, because we really want it to be done before winter. Um, we feel like it's just gonna become a, a terrible disaster the longer it waits. It's been a really wet um, last few weeks and the erosion has just gotten worse and worse. Bob Carey did come and make a delivery of um, uh, gravel so I don't know, you can see there's new gravel. This is where the driveway collapsed. This is the fence, the property line. And if you come down, I'd be happy to show you, I'm sure Bob Carey would be happy to show you what he did. So there's, there's all this new gravel. They piled up rocks against the driveway and poured in some new gravel. And you can see one rain and a new hole opened up and started to cave in again. Because you really, it's, it's just gravel. So, I know he's trying, 
and but it's I mean this is her um, this is this was from yesterday this was from a little bit earlier this is her patio this is part of her patio that fell down uh, sorry for the resolution on this they actually had to block off Bob came and blocked off part of her patio this is the property line and this whole part caved in you can see the steps are just kind of floating there her whole patio fell off mm -hmm. because it's just dirt um, so I'm happy to leave this with you. This is after the fix um, of Company Hill Path, and then this is the next rain. So, I mean, there's like, there's standing water here um, that they've got, this is a lot better. Actually, they've put a trench in, um, and so this is a lot less water than it has been in the past. This is the gap in the fence where um, my neighbor took this picture right before she stopped her grandson from going inside. Um, this is a public pathway. So, you know, um, it says in the zoning codes from 1954 that having an excavation site <coughs> open to uh, the access of children is punishable by a first offense $50 fine, second offense $500 or imprisonment. That was back then? That was back then. Oh my God. So, you know, um, we really don't want kids to get into the site. You know, you don't want kids in an excavation site. Um, so, so we would like to see a moratorium on the ICC project until they fix the erosion problem de definitively. Um, just like, fix it. Um, and then, you know, our last request is just a reiteration. Like just, just, if you're going to write codes, a code is a serious thing. It, it should involve a lot of minds, not just one person or one department, but it should maybe be based on other models. It should be, you know, really looked at, embedded, and carefully considered because this is going to be laws on the books that affect entire neighborhoods, entire projects. And this is not an emergency because whatever you do tonight, it's not going to, it's not going to, the ICC will be grandfathered. It's, it's that excavation is done. So there's no sense of emergency here. So you can take your time with it and, and do it right. Um, and and we, I know it's a lot of work, so we really appreciate your, uh, your considering it. And thank you very much for putting us on the agenda. Yes. It meant a lot to us. I'd be happy to, to give you a copy of my notes, too. You know, you can, if this is helpful. And just to reiterate one other thing or reinforce the request for, for looking into new law is the mayor basically uh, said to us that there's not that much the city can do with the laws that are on the books. That at the process at this point is the letter went out on Friday and they are given a week to come up with a site plan. And But there's no teeth to reinforce any of these deadlines or requests. So just to uh, give the city more power in these situations. As, yeah. far as, as far as, is that specific to excavation? Specific to the ICC, yes. That how well, how, yeah, they need to get to the city engineer a specific site plan around erosion and the excavation. And he did say that it, there are something in the, in the codes where if there's a violate, if there's some kind of violation, there's always a time frame. So they, they did give the ICC a time frame, and he said their recourse is because the ICC did put in a um, performance bond for $200,000, I think. Um, the city could go to court if the ICC doesn't fix the problem. They could go to court and, and petition to use the performance bond to make the fixes themselves using the ICC's like set aside money for the city's protection, um, but he he also said the mayor said that um, his fix would probably just be to like put up a fence and kind of just be like okay when you get your stuff together you will, but um, just keep in mind that you know my neighbor's property is crumbling. There's four families that live there. She it's a it's an, an income housing for uh, like a, a an income for rental property for her. 
So uh, she's got four tenants living there. They have they have four or five cars. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and the company home path is getting washed away and fixed and and paid for by you know, maybe potentially the taxpayers every time. Yeah, that first. So and you know, she can't sorry, she couldn't be here, but I could put you in touch with her if you wanted to know more specifics. You know, if you need I'm a researcher, so if you need any other <laughs> You want me to yeah. to you? Yeah, two children, you have all this time on your hands? I have three children. Three children, oh yeah. my gosh. <coughs> I, I, am, I am half, well, I mean, we had a whole neighborhood researching this, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, um, you know, I mean, Tanya, Judith, Lynn, <laughs> Susan are all here in support. Um, there were several, there were three, I think, letters that went to the mayor um, this week in response to his response. Um, there were, uh, Peter came, Peter Wetzler came on Monday, Joanne Myers came on Monday, um, who am I missing? Uh, Andrea Schott was there, because she's Ward 9, and some of some of our group is Ward 9. Steve Shabbat wasn't there, I think he's away. He's so, um, so, you know, there are a lot of people who are watching, and, and there are a lot of people who are concerned, um, and so we're really happy to help if we can be of any help because this affects our neighborhood, it affects our our neighbor's property. So we are committed to your success. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Very informative. Thank you so much. fixes at this time. Um, will it be a complete complete thing? Probably not, but I think if you hear these, I think they'll be a good a good start. And, and we have uh, section 211 is our excavation um, hazard um, section, but I'll, I'll certainly go through the Schenectady one. And um, if there are further further ways we can improve ours, obviously we will, we will look to do that. Um, but for now, for tonight, I think there's there are steps we can take that can get get things moving forward and, and um, fix a lot of problems going forward. Obviously, we can't go backwards. There's nothing that has happened before. This is going to fix. But um, as of you know, once this passes through the council, if it passes through the council, I think going forward, in any future excavation on properties, will now we will now have a mechanism to 
to make sure stuff like this doesn't happen again. So I will go through um, the committee reports. Um, you all have a copy of them. Hopefully you read them. But uh, the first one addressing the uh, building permits, which is 172.5. Um, building, because currently um, you don't need a permit um, for ex excavation. It's not part of the permit process. Um, so we really need to make that uh, make that part part of it. Because um, what this what this would do, it would also get the city engineer involved um, right off right off the bat. Um, for to oversee this and then there's other other things that come in with the engineer that I'll get to momentarily but uh, let me read the committee report and we can we can talk about this um, the building permits required um, except as otherwise provided in subsection B of this section a building permit shall be required for any work which must conform to the uniform code and or the energy code including but not limited to the construction, enlargement, or alteration, improvement, or removal, relocation, or demolition of any building or structure or any portion thereof, or excavation in preparation for any um, of the foregoing activities. In the case of any work involving excavation, no building permit shall be issued absent referral and review by the engineering department pursuant to section 353 of this code, which we'll get to in a moment because we also um, have some changes there. Um, and the receipt of a written certification from the engineering department regarding the compliance with said section. Um, so basically, um, any work involving excavation um, would now have to be um, signed off by the engineering department. And it also puts it on, on their radar if they know what's going on for follow-up to make sure that everything's in compliance and... Like, I, I just have some questions and I'd probably like to ask Tom about it. Okay. You know, the all excavation, again, it would be any small item that you were gonna do. And I believe all these were referred to the engineering department. I think there would be quite a delay before they got a, mm -hmm. an answer back. So any project that you were doing would probably add weeks to it, if not longer. Yeah. What do you I mean, just, just to put the word any in there, it's going to cause a lot of problem mm -hmm. for any excavation because typically in a 30 day period, I probably get about two dozen applications that come across my desk that have some type of excavation involved in it, whether it be to put a small addition on a house. Uh, I just had one today for a garage. You have to dig a foundation for this. So, to have the engineer review all these, it's not only going to tie his hands, if he's got to do 24 of these reviews every month, he's not going to be able to do quite a bit of other work, unless you make a part of the building department, you know, he'll be down here, he can work daily with us, which I don't think that's going to happen. But if we could set something up so it would be on a larger scale as well, well, we had talked about 50%. You think that's too too large, or should it be well, I, smaller I, I, than yeah. that? <coughs> I don't think I'm qualified that, to make that determination. This is something I think we need the engineer here to get his input on. You know what we're looking at as far as runoff, you know, know, those erosion are control. Good points. Okay. Yeah. I think for clarification, everyone needs to understand that the referral and the review by the engineering department is pursuant to the terms that are already set forth in 353, which outline what the engineer has to do with what size project. So basically, the building permit would be requested for the excavation. That would then be referred to the engineer. The engineer would then apply 353 and say, this one I need to you know, review this one I don't need to review based upon the criteria that are already set forth in 353. We have a very detailed stormwater prevention statute. Um, the engineer's department is already um, declared under that statute to be the enforcement officer mm -hmm. for stormwater and for, uh, you know, excavations. So all this does is tie the building permit section to the already existing stormwater section and alert the engineering department to the fact that engineering is that uh, excavation is taking place. So, 
So if the individual comes to me with an application to put a, an 8 by 10 shed in their backyard, but they want to be a foundation for it. Correct. I got to give it to the engineering? You give it to the engineering department. The engineering department determines under 353. Right now, my, or not okay, right, right 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 now my department has a pretty good reputation with dealing with building permits in the city here, a lot better than what it was in the past. Right? In the past, you put an application in, it might sit for two, three weeks before it got acted on and approved. Right? If they give me everything I need in the application, one or two days, and they got their building permit and can go ahead and work. Because most of them are stamp plans from an engineer or an architect that I go off of. Right? And a lot of, like I said, a lot of the simple building has some port, portion of excavation involved with it. If we're going to now throw all this to an engineer who has other work to do besides this, we're going to go right back to where these contractors are going to come in and have to wait three, maybe four weeks to get a building permit. Everything's going to stop in, in the city. People aren't going to want to build anything in here, right? Because I, I, and I hear it from contractors who come in from the outside. When they say, well, typically, you know, we were down in Westchester and we got to wait, you know, six, eight weeks. We're not doing any more work down here. You know, go to County Sofas. A friend of mine wanted to put a deck on his house. They told him, you submit the application anywhere from seven to 28 days before you get your building permit. Same thing, you'll put a roof on a house and you saw this. Your roof is leaking. It might take you four weeks before you get your building permit. Because they got that right in there. It doesn't take you that long in Kingston. But if, we, if we're not careful on how we word this, it may take you know four weeks for this, and all of a sudden, the development's going to stop. And once the development stops, you guys are going to raise taxes, then people aren't going to like it. Because you're not going to have the development coming in to, to offset that. So I'm just saying, be careful what you put down. And if you use the word any in there, I think you're opening the door for a, big, a whole bunch of problems. Anyone have any questions? Anything to add or say that? So you're saying, Tom, your suggestion is that we get engineering here mm -hmm. to, yeah. to make a, a determination of yeah. what any is. Yeah. yeah. But is that already defined in 353? The extent of the engineer's review is defined in 350. Whether it requires a full swim. So, it, so it, all, it already exists, it's just not in the permit process. There's just yeah. no connection at this point. The engineer's mm -hmm. department isn't notified that excavation is taking place, so they do not make the determination as to what scope of review they need to undertake. This way, they're notified. Okay, the engineering department then says, do we need no review? Do we need a Middle range review that we need a full review, and all of that is already set forth in 353. So, is this be another paper? If you want to say paperwork goes to to another department, Tom can still give his, his permits. No, 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 he Not can't issue a permit like, until the engineering department gets okay. back to him and says there's no issue. Okay, and that's what you're saying could hold up. Right, so they have to sign off on it, but he's saying it could, it could, it could take now. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of yeah. work. So, is there language we can use to make it, you know, maybe reasonable? An 8x10 shed should not require uh, the engineer to sign off on anything. You know what I'm saying? Tom or who's ever in charge down there should be able to make that determination. When a guy comes in or something, a person comes in and says, We have an 8x10 shed here we'd like to put up in our backyard. Here's a picture of my backyard. Mm -hmm. Why we? Why would we bog down the engineer with that? Tom doesn't feel comfortable of giving us the verbiage. I don't know what sign it should say. Should so we need that? Every engineer. excavation is different, and it's not just a matter of size. It's a matter of location. It's a matter of you know the composition of the earth. It's a matter of you know the, you know, the proximity to the property lines, as you know, Hillary was discussing with you. That's an issue really for the engineer to decide, um, to say that this particular project either has a potential impact or doesn't have a potential impact. And if there is an impact, this is what has to be done to ameliorate it. I, I hear you, but I'm saying that the, you know, these people who work in the building and safety department have knowledge you know, about some of this. At least they should, if they're in that position. And maybe they could. Uh, Take care of some of that. Well, the building safety department, whether they'll be respected or not, engineers, and 
you know, they're not qualified to determine whether or not, you know, the, you know, the excavation is posing a risk to, you know, the structure of the earth around the property. That's the well. Issue. They're not electricians and plumbers either, but they don't have to. They don't have to have. Uh, they don't have to go to the site and, and see that either. But they what they do is they have people that come in afterwards and inspect, right? Like an electrical inspector would come in and inspect after the fact, right? And make sure it's proper. So you I mean you would get the you would get the uh, someone to take a maybe you would when they. I don't know. I just feel that we, we we can't we can't overburden the engineer with stuff that could be easily taken care of. Well, the statute already puts the responsibility on the engineering department. They but are just, just not triggering it because they're not being notified. Just to add, looking at three fifty three, it's an acre or greater. Well, not exactly. There are other provisions within sixty three fifty three that. Um, permit the engineer to exercise discretion and require um, more intervention. There's an acre, there's a half an acre, and there's also a catch-all that upon inspection, if there are issues, you know, he can direct amelioration. That's right. Yeah, it's just That's discretion. Right. discretion. Yeah, take a look at 353. It's pretty detailed. Okay. Discretion mm -hmm. doesn't actually define what needs to be done, though. Mm -hmm. It leaves it up to a choice. Within 353, are there different thresholds that would allow the engineer to say, oh yeah, go ahead, no problem. Absolutely. And yeah. you know, wow, we've got to look at this a little bit, or we've got to look at this a lot. Absolutely. So that, yeah. so that Tom's concerned that it's everything takes six weeks. You know, whether it's a, well, you know, whether it's, you know, it's a no-brainer or you got to bring in a big engineering firm to, you know, at the other end of the complicated. But you have one city engineer who is, like right now, who's got a problem on Greenfield Avenue with sewer glass. Right. That's going to take precedent over everything else. So the building permits are going to just sit and, and wait until he can get around to reviewing it. And maybe they don't take any engineering, you know, there's, there's nothing the engineer has to do but pass it back to me and I can issue the permit. I won't know that until he reviews it. So. And I know the building safety division isn't an engineer, but I think it should go to the building safety person. He can look at it, he knows, and he can ride past the parcel and check it out and make sure that either gets referred or not referred. Why doesn't he make yeah, that I mean, trigger? Can you walk it through if it's a, a no-brainer? You just take it down to the engineering department and say, here, sign this. At least he's looked at it. Well, that's the way it's been done. That's the way it's been done. That's the way it currently is, right? There's nothing. And that works. Yeah, well, it works up until, up until, up until, up until now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And why does DPW uh, have a permitting process for, why are they the ones who permit for uh, excavation of sidewalks? Why isn't that in the building safety purview? Yeah, they do. If you want a permit, you have to go with that. Exactly. Like, I don't understand why one department would do excavations in certain situations Good and question. another department do excavations in another situation. 1954. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Never again. Never again. We're done. <laughs> I mean, honestly, since I've been down the building department, the, the ICC is the first entity that's ever come before us that all they wanted to do was dig a hole. Right. Everybody else with putting a foundation in has to dig a hole, but you get a building permit to put the foundation in. Well, just to dig a hole, you don't need a building permit right now. This is what we want to try to straighten out. But the thing is, to have every permit or application reviewed by the engineer, if there is any excavation involved with it, is not only going to be time constraining on the engineer's part there, but it's going to bog the whole system down for everything. Because then, according to Section 353, the engineer has to go to the site and make periodic inspections. So either we start hiring more engineers and put one in the building department who can do these inspections, then on sites that he says, yeah, definitely needs you know stormwater control and erosion control methods all put in there. The, the statute's clear. 353 says engineer will do the inspections on these. We'll go there. You know, maybe one guy. Maybe we could do something like 
if the excavation is so far so close to the property line or so deep or so large so large there's a lot so, of right. there's you know, we have to be there could be like three mm -hmm. stipulations that the that the uh, safety department can take a look at and if they're not met then of course then it would go to the engineer so let's say it's got to be 10 feet or 15 feet from the property line the, the hole and if it's any more than five feet deep well that, that's a trigger to go to the engineer and then you know something like that and then put some guidelines in there so that the checklist a checklist yeah check check check, check, check. and then we can do this and then, no. okay right. now right. these instead of the 12 the 12 or 24 that are coming in a month now the engineer sees three Instead of instead of twenty four, where are they going to be? No, you get, we get individuals want to put pools in your yard. In oh, ground pools. You, you you the the building safety department some authority to uh, to make the decision. For which they're doing right now. Which they're doing right now. Right. This is what I'm getting at the threshold levels. And who's who's been looking in the hole in the in the excavations for the last forever? Who's the person in the city that keeps in the nose and looks at it? Right. Building the building department looks at them, right? So they've been looking at these things for a long, long time. They should be able to, you know, after a while, you, you understand that this is not safe, right? Or this is a safe hole here. So it might be something. I mean, I think, but by the same token, I, I, I think putting um, putting excavation in to where it, it does, we do need a permit, I think, does make sense. But I think we're, we, it's the it's the degrees that we're getting bogged down and so it, it sounds more like 353 needs to be looked at and and maybe revised because it might not be it might you know that might not be a huge change in 353 but we don't have we don't have that in front of us so I don't I don't know if we're prepared to do that now but it's but it's not I think in theory I think it's it's a good idea I mean if, if you're doing major excavation on a property you should have a permit and you shouldn't and not any yeah, other should be able, I should be able to dig a fifty foot well, hole. If you want to put a patio in your backyard, you're gonna excavate down a foot into this, you know. Right. And then that's 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 so, so I mean there should be a lot you should be able to do that on a Sunday afternoon. Right. <laughs> you know what but, I mean? but, yeah, but right now I can dig a, right now I can dig a fifty foot hole in my backyard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and, that, and that's, that's the problem. And that's the problem. <laughs> so so we got to kind of get somewhere in the middle where we're not bogging the system down, for right, us, but but we're protecting right. not you know not only neighbors or ourselves. Right. You know. but that's why I think Pat's getting to in that section second part. In the case of any work involving, you can put some criteria. And, and, so know, let's just do the A part, and then we'll yeah. work on that. I mean, A one and not A two one. I'll give you an example right now. There's no requirement if you want to put a landscaping wall on your property. There's no requirement for a building permit because it's just that it's just landscape but it's excavation so you do this now the engineer has to look at it you got to get a building permit to do it to dig down a few feet to start the first course yeah, so it's got to be reasonable so we had you know because if you use the word any you're going to open the book up to a lot of problems unless you use any but then you put any work involving and over put, yeah, over right two feet on, down yeah, over, over yeah uh, over or less than five feet from a property line. Right. Mm -hmm. and those are the three like yeah. Pat was going before. Then you had some checklists where the building department could just say, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Well, they meet those criteria. We can give the Berlin permit. Oh, they don't meet, they, they meet two of these three or whatever. Mm -hmm. It has to go to your engineer and they have to yeah. take a look at it. And like Pat says, then you're not holding down, bogging down 24 permits. Now you're bogging down maybe four or five permits mm -hmm. that the engineer mm -hmm. has to get to. Could we replace the word any with the word extensive and then somewhere footnote it and find what we mean by right. extensive? <laughs> yeah, well, then that's, again, that's, you'd have to go back into yeah. the 353 and mm -hmm. change I mean, the word. That's better. Because then that's, yeah, that becomes dangerous. Yeah. Obviously, it needs to be looked at there. Mm -hmm. right. Or like you said, oh, Jim is saying you take out two when you come back to it. Yeah, just do A. I think A is important. But I think right, A, is already, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A, A is already in there as is, except to uh, the the or excavation. And that's what we're looking at, excavation. Yeah. Okay, so just to add the or, yeah. or excavation. If any other foregoing, I think. And you'll come back to two. And, and then we'll just, we'll work on two. What does everyone think of that? 
So the building permit, I mean, this, this part again is already there. The building permits required except as otherwise provided in subsection B of this section of a building permit shall be required for any work uh, which must conform to the uniform code and our energy code, including but not limited to the construction, enlargement, alteration, improvement, removal, relocation, or demolition of any building or structure or any portion thereof, or excavation and preparation for any of the going activities. You're addressing that excavation and that part right there. And I think then the building the safety and engineer can get together and this, have this discuss, discussion about too. In the meantime, what do you guys feel comfortable in building safety? So we're saying you need, so, so if we just keep A, we're saying that uh, we need a permit for excavation, but we're not saying who's who's um, providing the permit for well, um, what excavation what, means. So we're not. Um, yeah. Or what so we're not saying who well, even number two doesn't tell you that. It's the same problem. Or what right. excavation means. So again, is well, it, two, two does do you need a permit to dig that patio or the backyard? That, that landscaping patio? I don't know. Mm. You know, it almost needs to be right. outlined here too. Or, right. or you know what I'm yeah, saying? What, what, what do you what, mean, what, what, what what's 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 mean by excavation? Yeah. I mean, it almost needs to be outlined a little bit here, too. We really need the engineer to come in and give us some parameters. Meet with the building. And meet with the building safety. They, 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 they work it out. Yeah. Yeah. They work it out what can, what they feel comfortable saying we can do, and then what they don't feel comfortable doing, which right. then will trigger it going to yeah. the uh, engineering department. Yeah. I, mean, I, I agree sense. that you do need some kind of control over excavation. But, it's, but again, I, I don't know if everything should just get dumped on the engineer. Right. Point. Right. So is that something you can meet with? I'd be glad to meet with him and we can come up with something that, you know, a little guideline. is acceptable by the engineer's department so it doesn't tie his hands, mm -hmm. yet things keep flowing through the building department pretty good. It doesn't tie us up there. Well, I'm sure he would even work. He'd be happier without this uh, situation. Yeah. So, I mean, if we could have prevented this, he would barely be happy about that. Yeah. So. He's probably somewhere in between himself. You know, he'd probably like to avoid problems like this, but not yeah, take care of every don't forget situation. We got a new engineer starting up in what three weeks? Two weeks? Two weeks? Three weeks? So he's on mistake at least a couple of weeks before. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get let's get around the sign off on this before these. Yeah, yeah. Let's get around the sign off on this. Yeah, yeah. He'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. Well, when he comes in, he'll know that we're we're trying we're working on it. Mm -hmm. Well, because the other one, the other committee report. Again, refers to Section 353 <laughs> about the city engineer being authorized to issue issue uh, appearance tickets for violations as well. Which Dan already says 353 is already in the thing. So this is well, the difference well, no, between 353 and other sections um, authorizing department heads to cite individuals for violations is that it's the only section in the code that doesn't have the one line that says that they are authorized to issue appearance tickets. So all this is doing is bringing 353 in compliance to the rest of the code. So you look like you can sign, yeah, you can sign on that. Well, I mean, we can do that anyway. Right? Yeah, I mean, that, that would make sense to because that's independent of, of anything to do with excavation. That could be for anything. So, yeah, to so it's just clarifying the authority right. he already has, mm -hmm. you know, based on the fact that he's designated as the enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. So, so, if, we, so if we want to amend 353 to add section 353-13D, Appearance tickets, the city engineer is authorized to issue appearance tickets for violations of this section and um, subsequently relettering 353-13 DEF as E, F, and G since we're inserting the D. I mean, that, that we can still do and, right. and still gives the engineer the authority to. to um, mm -hmm. Right. To but wouldn't it make more sense to just, as opposed to doing a piecemeal, to just look at 353 <coughs> as a whole? And yeah, so fix everything that needs to be fixed within. Yeah, but this this is a simple fix to stuff. I mean, I think we do have to look at 353 as a whole. Right? Well, and and I don't say, think this. And you're saying though that this appearance tickets is a fix for what? Like if someone if someone's not doing something within the within 353, they're doing something wrong. They're not they're not complying with something that's under the engineer's jurisdiction. Right now, he can just. He can't do anything. He All can right. just say, well, you're not doing it right. I don't okay. know why I'm not uh, as uh, knowledgeable about 353 as I'd like to be. I'm not either. I think that we all know. Oh, okay. I thought you guys were all That's what I'm saying. I think that's 
Yes. <laughs> we know that the engineer has a, has, falls into 353. Yeah, so right now it'll have any, it'll have any power. I don't know what this impact would, would the, well, I mean, I haven't, you know, Bill, I, you want me to vote on 